what's up guys i'm back again finally with a fresh haircut that's how it's supposed to be and today we have a really big job we have to replace this rear wheel bearing on this w201 mercedes so i'm probably not gonna talk too much i'm just gonna you know uh kind of like skim you through the process of how i'm doing it and yeah the only thing is i want to show you the how bad this um wheel bearing is and um as some of you may know, uh, the wheel bearings go bad uh, in two ways. Either they become really loose or they make a lot of noise. In this case, this wheel bearing is super loose and these wheel bearings are not adjustable. They're press-on wheel bearings. And this procedure actually is going to work on a lot of old school Mercedes such as W210, W126, uh, I'm sorry, W124, W201. Um, and other chassis so you have a press on uh, rear wheel bearings on your Mercedes this video is gonna be really helpful um, so stay tuned and let's go ahead and finish it <laughs> get it done so this is a really important tip um, I see this problem all the time when people jack up their cars doesn't matter what car it is Mercedes BMW Toyota Nissan when you jack up your car you're supposed to use either a block of wood or this rubber spacer this rubber pad this is really important when you jack up the car if you don't do that um, a lot of cars such as Toyota's uh, they have what's called pinch weld um, you will literally see it like right there uh, there's gonna be a pinch weld and if you just go jack like this to the pinch weld you're gonna bend that pinch weld eventually uh, if you keep doing that all over all over again it's gonna go bad it's gonna probably just bend your floor it's gonna go through your floor right away so uh, and also when you put the jack jack stands on I love putting the pads on the jack stand and then I lower the car on this pad that's sitting on the jack stand uh, that's really important guys um, yeah let's save classic Mercedes let's save classic cars and do it all right and safe and prevent any problems and another reason why you want to use a block of wood or rubber pad is because if you go metal to metal uh, it's gonna chip off the uh, undercoating underneath uh, or paint it's gonna cause a bare metal which you as you all know will start rusting so that's a big no-no let's check out this wheel play i loosened these bolts but I'm gonna tighten them back up for a little bit so we can check this play show it to you and I already checked that it's none of the, the bushings or anything that are causing this all right feel that play the whole thing is moving a disc brake is moving Okay, after you uh, jacked it up, you gotta put it on a jack stand and I keep it under the control arm. Uh, and I still keep some of the weight on the jack. Um, and then you're gonna need a 30, 30 millimeter 12 point socket to remove this axle nut. Okay. The biggest thing right now is going to be uh, getting to the axle, which is right there. And as you can see, those bolts, you have to clean them really, really good before you try to put the socket bit in there and loosen it. It's really important. You gotta clean all the junk and debris off. So, that's gonna be the plan. 
so what I did is I lowered the exhaust a little bit off of that mount right there and if you have um, these mounts right here you might need to lower that as well so it gives you better access to this axle in their joint uh, right now what I'm doing is I'm using the degreaser pick and toothbrush and stuff like that so I can clean the inner side of these holes because you will have to use the triple square bit for this which is like a what is it 12 point I think I forgot but it's it's not a Torx it's like a star like Germans like to use so this is the one that we're gonna be using and as you can see I'm pulling a lot of junk from the inside of that uh, bolt uh, and this is needed so you don't have to uh, so you won't strip the actual bolt uh, otherwise if you don't uh, remove this junk out of those bolts uh, it's possible that you will strip the inside of that and then you will be screwed you'll have a lot more work so that's why it's better to take time right now and clean all this up uh, get it all nice and squared away so you won't have any issues later on and again make sure your socket bit is all the way in tap it in if needed you don't want to strip these guys they're pretty tight on there so when you're loosening those bolts it's a good idea to have parking brake on so hopefully your parking brake is working if your parking brake is not working then um, you can put it to park uh, but the best thing is to actually you can put it to park or in gear but the best thing is to put the wheel on and just lower it so it's resting on the wheel that way the wheel is going to basically counteract your forces trying to uh, loosen that bolt you know because if uh, you can't do it in neutral if you're doing it in neutral you're basically going to be just spinning this axle so in, case, in my case what i have is i have my transmission in neutral and my parking brake is set and my parking parking brake is working and it's holding everything uh, in place so I can loosen those bolts on the inner axle joint so oh and also my subframe bushings are gone and these are still fine but my inner control arm bushings are gone too and I really hate this thing I need to fix it ASAP how could someone just do it like this or leave it like that that's crazy So the way to loosen these, especially if you are working on the ground and if you don't have a lift, uh, you're just going to need to use your legs and your feet to help you out. Socket is all the way, it's so the first thing you make sure. Oh, that thing's so tight. Make sure to sock it all the way again. Always double check that. Also, one important tip when you're trying to loosen those bolts with your feet, uh, grab your other hand and go through here and help it keep it straight right there. Okay. It. so also keep in mind that there are two of these uh, kind of half moon rings or spacers so take those out 
Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead. I have to spin it one more time to get to the last two bolts. And uh, I'll be right back I'm, as soon as I'm done with this. After you remove the last bolt, the axle will come out. Axle doesn't look the best. I mean, I should replace these boots for sure, or at least add more grease, possibly. We'll see. Right now, I'm really running out of time, and I have to finish this wheel bearing. It's the main priority, but we'll keep an eye on these guys. So let me tell you a story. 
So this slide hammer, it's a really good thing, but on this car, it didn't work too well. And I had to come up with something like this, which is a crazy combination. So let me remove this guy and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So initially I was gonna use this, okay. You just, you're supposed to put three bolts in here, okay. The best is to use some old bolts and stuff but and then the problem that i ran into is that the third bolt wouldn't go in here so i was like no way so then i was trying to find ideas and i had this in the kit because when you're using a slide hammer you want to at least have a bolt in here and at least a bolt in here not just on one side because then if you're doing like the slide hammering uh, action it's only pulling this side but it's supposed to pull this side so that's why i struggled pretty hard so but right now it's it's all good i'm gonna take this stuff off i don't need the slide hammer anymore and there's the wheel bearing and there's a snap ring that we're gonna have to take off and the wheel bearing it's just a little dirty the grease is still fine inside but the bearing itself was just loose so we're changing this guy today and uh, someone cut this um, backing plate previously I don't know why but yeah and here's the hub and as you can see the inner race state so we're gonna have to remove that I'll either cut it off, I'll either try to carefully use the brass punch to hammer it out. You can also use a puller to pull it off. Trying to remove the snap ring now. So, quick update, um, 
today is not going the way I was planning to. My 190E, my baby Benz, is all torn apart and I cannot finish the job because the wheel bearing that I got was defective. It was at the last moment when I decided to check before I pressed that wheel bearing in and I noticed that it had it was defective. It had a lot of play on the inner races and stuff. So I really did not like that. And yeah, so I just gotta leave this car the way it is right now. And tomorrow get to go get another bearing. I don't know. I mean it's really weird. I don't know, maybe it's just a coincidence. I think National is a pretty good brand. Um, I was just so in a rush to get a wheel bearing done, so I didn't want to wait. You know, I didn't want to order online and just wait for like, you know, five days until it gets here, blah blah blah. So just wanted to get it done, but uh, I already called and ordered a uh, wheel bearing from Napa, so I'm gonna get one from Napa tomorrow morning. I'll pick it up and uh, hopefully we'll finish it all up tomorrow. But yeah, as you can see, uh, I just uh, covered it up right now and that's it. I might actually clean this area tonight, you know, make it all nice and uh, this i'll fix this guy so as you know this is uh this hose is twisted and the problem is that i'm gonna actually have to loosen these lines uh, this brake hose in order to actually uh put it the way it should be so that kind of sucks but it is what it is so yeah and this is just uh covered it up and uh right now there's grease in there so it's not gonna rust it's good finally have the right bearing and it's SKF bearing made in Spain all right so this is a good bearing so uh, what was happening with the old one is that it would have play I would move these inner races would have play on both sides so that's why it was bad and right now this one's perfect has no issues so I'll be installing this guy right now I also fixed the brake hose right now. It's not kinked anymore. It's good. Straightened that out. And I also cleaned the wheel well right here. So it's looking really beautiful.
working hard or hardly working? <laughs> Look at that. Restoring W210 headlights. This one is already restored. It looks beautiful. So on this. Yeah, look at that, the difference. Not restored versus restored. Nice, really nice. All right, wheel bearing and a hub are in. Nice, smooth, no play. Amazing. Okay, so we're gonna reinstall everything back right now. I'm gonna paint this backing plate and uh, yeah, I'm also gonna prep that axle. I'm gonna grease it up a little more. I'm gonna add some grease into that. I guess so everything is pretty much back installed caliper uh, everything brake disc already checked the parking brake is working it's good and we painted this backing plate that half of it is missing because of the previous owner who knows what they were doing I'm not sure but I cleaned it all, cleaned it all up and painted it um, and I'm so sorry I wasn't filming too much as far as how I was pressing this new bearing in this is the old bearing okay but the main thing it's not that hard honestly saying with having these this kit this tool set so uh, you will be fine the only thing to watch out for is when you're when the this bearing is already pressed in here and you're trying to press the hub on so the hub is gonna go here right the only thing what you need to watch out for is on the back side uh, you must hold the you must put like a cup that fits this inner race all the way around you have to hold it like this with the race because if you put you if you use like a big disc here or something uh, this race it's possible that this race will get pushed out as you're you know pressing the hub in so to hold the hub in you just gotta literally grab something that fits the inner race okay and hold it from the back side so as you can see this disc right here fits in a race pretty good okay right there so you'll just hold it like this from the back side that way this disc will hold the inner race from coming out as you're pushing as you're pressing the hub in place i hope that makes sense all right guys so while the axle is waiting and is drying up um i decided to go ahead and undercoat everything here with wheel bearing grease everything is nicely undercoated uh also behind the shock absorber everything is nicely coated with grease and also right here everything is coated okay and um uh, i know that a lot of you will will disagree with me but that's okay but remember this is the best undercoating ever you can do to the car and if this car was if let's say this car was sitting in a museum of course i would not do that but this is my daily driver and i want to protect everything and i don't want any rust showing up and or appearing so that's why this is my method of doing the undercoating and i'm gonna do the whole car uh, by coating the grease uh, on it so I already coat as you remember in my previous video I don't know when maybe a month ago or so when I did when I uh, showed you how I undercoated in the trunk so there's the grease right there and right now I'm doing this wheel well and eventually I'll do the whole car okay I'm also planning to remove these side skirts and inspect everything what's behind the side skirts uh, clean all that up and if there's any rust fix it all up and obviously coat everything with this grease this is the best thing you can do to your car especially your old school car it will never ever rust it will last for a hundred years at least so yeah and uh, spots that are easy or hard to get to which is right there above the subframe I'm gonna use fluid film right there. I'm gonna spray fluid film everywhere there. So and that's gonna be the plan. Um, yeah. So I really highly recommend for you guys to do the same thing to your cars. 
I'm eventually I'm gonna do the whole video on how to undercoat the car and how to properly undercoat it with uh, the grease that I'm using. So yeah, just stay tuned for that. But hopefully you're enjoying this video, and I'm about to, uh, you know, put the axle back and a couple more tips when you're putting the axle back. Um, these are just half of the bolts for it, and they're all triple square. Okay, so you're gonna need a, if you're doing a job like this on a Mercedes. Um, you're gonna need a triple square socket bit. I think it's a uh, number 10. Uh, and uh, before you reinstall these bolts, uh, you have to put some blue thread locker on it, okay, on all these bolts just in case. All right. Um, and I don't remember the torque spec, but I'm gonna tighten it my way. Uh, I'm gonna tighten it like the way I feel how it's supposed to be tightened, you know, because my arm is pretty trained up, so, but still. Even when doing this, I'll put some thread locker just in case uh, because it had that from the factory. So I got the thread locker with me and we're going to do that. I'm pretty excited, guys. Hopefully everything is good. And at the end, we're going to check um, the play in the wheel bearing. Make sure it's all good and there's no play. Okay, axle is in. Right now I'm putting the bolts in and I'm using blue thread locker with the bolts. Okay guys, the axle is back in. Everything is torqued. Everything is looking really nice and good. Same right here. Everything looks great. And by the way, you probably noticed that my axle boots are not in the best shape. Uh, that is correct, but they're still okay, and I'm just uh, I don't have time right now to mess with the axle boots So I'll replace them another time for right now. They're still okay. They're not torn. So Let's put the wheel back on and let's check for wheel play. Now let's check that wheel play No more noise nothing I don't feel the play Awesome. That's it.